Hello, welcome to my gallery. Uh, in this vlog, we're going to talk about how I get ready for the paint logs. So uh, it's 12 noon on a Friday, and we just opened the gallery. And tonight at 7 o'clock, we have 16 artists coming along to follow me along in the paint along. So uh, today's a busy day getting ready. Now, Cameron, if you can kind of pan around, you can see that we're already starting to get ready. Uh, but over the course of the day, I'll show you what I do to get ready and then we'll actually uh, bring you along to the paint along tonight. So that's what we're going to do today. So tonight we're doing a paint along and it's going to be a winter scene um, and the way these whole paint along things have come about is kind of interesting. I had a friend of mine about a year ago who's also a very serious collector tell me that I should be looking at doing these paint alongs and I just really wasn't interested uh, in it because what I had seen of these type of things before was people go to a bar, that's an excuse to get drunk and along the way they play around with paints a little bit. And he said to me, no, you should do like a really high-end paint along for people who are like collectors of your work and fans of your work. And I kind of dismissed that, but then after I opened my own gallery, I kind of thought, well, gee, maybe he's got a point there. And I thought, well, what would a, what would a high-end paint along look like? Um, so then I started thinking about that. So we've actually done two already. They've been extremely successful. Uh, people just love them. Uh, and what we do for ours, again, I want to think about what could make this super high end. So the one thing you know that I start with my work on a red canvas with the composition blocked in. So this is actually a clay of my initial composition. And we've got 16 of these that we printed out and had stretched. So when everybody comes tonight, they're going to be working on a canvas exactly the same as mine to start with. I'm also going to be squeezing out all of the, I've already started mixing the paints and I'm going to be mixing the paints on each of their palettes and I'm also going to provide all of the brushes, all, everything basically. All that people need to do is basically wear paint clothes and show up with a willing spirit. Now we had a few other investments we had to make in terms of once we decided to do this and that was these easels. So again, we need to have something to have people to put the canvases on. So we have 16 of these easels that I went out and purchased. We also needed some tables and some chairs. Um, but these events, like I say, they've been very successful. Um, so they generate actually a lot of money in the course of it. Basically takes an entire day to get ready and then the evening to run it. Um, but it also has the added bonus of just bringing 16 people into the gallery who might not otherwise um, know we're here. And anytime someone walks in the gallery, then that's a potential sale that may happen tonight or down the road. And they can also go back and um, tell their friends about the gallery. So we're going to get ready. I'm going to come back to you over the course of the day when I'm actually when I'm uh, mixing the palettes and getting everything ready. But just thought I'd let you know that's kind of what's gone on for these whole paint alongs. So one of the things about this paint along that I think really appeals to people is the fact that I mix all of the paint colors for them that I'm going to be using in the painting. So you can see here I've got three separate palettes. So this one is of the sky color, this one is the snow color, and these are some of the colors in the foliage. And what I find is the easiest way to do this is to mix big huge batches of paint and then I go around to each palette with a knife and put a little bit out on each one, laying out each palette exactly the same. Um, so this is going to make it much easier for people that they're all going to have the exact same mixtures of paint and they're all going to be laid out exactly the same on their palettes. This is hugely time consuming. So this is where in the past I've actually got way behind uh, because depending on the painting it can take three or four hours to mix all of these mixtures of paint and then go dole them out. On the palettes. So what I did last night is I actually mixed a number of them last night, last thing here at the gallery, and then put them in the stay wet palette so the paint would stay fresh. Um, and then now today I'm just going about kind of laying them out on the palettes. Oh my god, we're only like three minutes after seven. Perfect. So we are going to do a winter scene tonight. Um, Diane has told me not to talk too much before I start getting <laughs> 
I kind of talk a lot and we do want to get you guys painted. Um, but just, I just want to get, get a feel from the show of hands. How many people here would consider themselves like absolute beginners? Okay, good. That's fine. We've actually had a lot of absolute beginners here and they've done incredibly well. How many people are, are would consider themselves sort of you know, fairly experienced, kind of hobbyist painters? Yeah. And anybody here who considers themselves like a really serious painter? Okay, great. So I hope that for all of you, you're going to get value. Um, did, I love I love teaching, and I love teaching at different levels too. So for 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 those of you who are kind of beginners, when I'm talking about the what we're doing, um, and that applies for everybody as well. Like, but that's where you really need to pay attention. But when I start getting into the whys, why I do this, that's for the people who who are kind of more serious painters. Because one of the things that whenever you do a workshop or whatever. You know, if, if you just do the what, then all you really learn is how to do what you just did. But if you if you learn the whys, then you start being able to take that and applying it to things you do on your own. So just so you know, for those of you who are beginners, and I'm talking about why I do this or why I do that, you don't really need to pay attention to that. But those of you who are a little more experienced, that's probably where you are going to get more value. Then you can take those whys um, into when you're doing your own work. So I paint differently than most people. Most artists, they paint with, a, you know, they, they start with the sky and they do the background and they do the middle ground and they do the foreground. I paint in a very different way, um, which is kind of as backwards. I tend to paint a lot of the foreground elements first and then paint the sky and then paint kind of the middle ground and then paint the foreground, but all in different orders depending on the subject matter. And my work goes together more like a mosaic. So I don't do a lot of blending. A lot of times when I touch a stroke of paint to the canvas, that's all that happens to that stroke of paint. I don't come in and move it um, around. I don't do an awful lot of blending other than maybe right around the sun. So that's just a little talk about kind of the way I paint. And the way I paint is not the way to paint. It's just the way I paint. And it's very different um, from the way most artists do. And so I would just recommend to you that uh, you just throw yourself into this, do your best, and if when you leave here, there's elements about this that appeal to you, then by all means, kind of take that and incorporate it into the way you paint. But we are, I talked a little bit about the paints here too. So we are using water-soluble oils. Um, so has anybody ever painted with water-soluble oils before? Yeah, okay. So <coughs> these, these, these are, I think, the greatest things since sliced bread. Uh, because with traditional oils, if we were painting as traditional oils, we would all be dying in here with the smell of turpentine. Because uh, you need turpentine and paint thinner to clean your brushes. With these, we just have soap and water. So these are not like acrylics or watercolor where they're meant to be diluted with water, but you can clean your brushes with soap and water. Um, and you all have the, between you there the buckets. Um, the blue buckets are clear water, and the green buckets have a little bit of soap in them. And so when you go to clean your brush, Basically, you do that is you wipe off the excess on the paper towel that's in front of you, and you swish it in the, in the soapy water, then you swish it in the clear water, and then you dry it off. Um, I like to dry it off on my shirt, uh, or there's all kinds of paper towels around there as well. And it is really important when you're going from color to color. I've got these kind of laid out in, these are the colors of the sky, these are the colors of the foliage, this is the snow, these are going to be involved in the sun. When you're going from sky colors to foliage colors, you need to clean your brushes or you're going to just mix them all together. You can go from any one of these colors to another without cleaning your brush. You can just wipe it off and go because the colors aren't that different. But if you go from like a, an orange to this light blue, you're going to turn that whole thing just gray. So it's important to clean your brushes um, when you're moving from areas of color that are for different things. So I tried to kind of label it just so that you, you can be aware of what you're supposed to be doing, depending on what you're painting. Okay, so we're gonna kind of do this in stages. Basically what we're gonna do, so I paint negative shapes a lot, which means we are gonna define all of the branches in here by painting the spaces in between them. So everywhere where you see the red of the canvas poking through, above this horizon, that sky. And so we're gonna be painting strokes of color between those branches. And we're also gonna be creating sweeps of like arabesque-like curves of the various colors in there to kind of move the eye um, 
around in the painting. Now, when we go to do this, you don't need to get in and start kind of coloring in like very, very tightly every little group. You can just put strokes that try to fill in those areas. There will be some of the areas of the red showing through, and that's okay because we can go and put foliage in there later. So the big mistake that I see when we have the paint lines is people get tied up and they've been painting for an hour and they've just painted four little shapes in there, <laughs> right? So we, we can err on the side of looseness. And then if you end up painting over your branches and you need to make a correction, then the Q-tip is your best friend. Um, and the fact that these are water soluble makes it even better. So if you paint over a branch and you want to remove the paint, just take the Q-tip and remove it. Remember you get two kicks at the Q-tip. <laughs> if you do three, you can tell me what the paint tastes like. And I, I can tell you, not good. I've done that before. So we are going to paint our sky first. And we are going to do it, so you can see in the sky colors, we've got the darker bluish colors, and then it goes lighter and warmer. The, our sky is going to go from darker and bluer out here, and as we move towards the sun, it's going to go into the lighter shades of blue, into the green, purple, and then even that light orange around the sun. So it's going to be a gradual gradation. I'll get into how we can do that. But I just let you know the order we're going to do stuff in. So we're going to do the sky, most of the sky, just so you get a feel for that. And then we'll come in and we're going to paint the sun. So most people want to see how I paint the sun, so we're going to do that. And then once we've kind of got the sky and the sun done, then we're going to move down to our snow. And you can see we've got the snow colors down there. Um, and everywhere you see, so you can see the dark shapes are the tree shapes, where the, the thinner washed shapes are, those are the shadow shapes. Um, and so we're going to paint in all our blues, then we'll paint in a little magenta, then we'll paint in the light colors. And then once that's done, we'll come in and you can see in your photo all these bright oranges that are in the background. We'll come in and paint those around the trees. Um, and then once that's done, then we'll come in and we'll start putting those areas where we've left the red of the sky. And I've actually just indicated some strokes uh, here for foliage too, just so we, we have some for sure. And we'll come in and we'll put little dots of color in there. But that's basically how it's gonna go. But all you really need to worry about is following along like one, one thing at a time. So the first thing is going to be the sky. Now I, I should also tell you, if you're painting with the water soluble oils, if you've ever tried them, if you just paint on canvas, it's, it's dry um, and the paint does not slide on and everything goes on dry brush. So what I've learned is this is water soluble oil painting medium by whole line. They also have a water soluble linseed oil. I put a fine coating of linseed oil on all of these canvases. So the, your paints should slide on beautifully. Um, that you shouldn't have to, if you, if you don't have the oil on, you have to scrub the paint on to get it in the tooth of the canvas. This will just slide on. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start painting this guy, but I'd like all of you to come up.
Well, that was a great, uh, a great night last night. We had a really good group. Uh, and some of the results were just amazing, as always. Um, it just amazes me how well the paintings turn out. Just goes to show you've got a great composition and you've got the right colors and the right values. All you have to do is kind of sort of get them in the right place and it can still make a, a striking painting. Now it's uh, Saturday and we're back at the gallery and uh, we have a full day of kind of cleaning up. So while these uh, paint alongs are lots of fun, um, and they're actually quite lucrative too. So uh, you know, one of these basically pays the gallery expenses for the months, for a month's rent and insurance. It's a lot of work. So it takes more than a full day to get set up for it. And then there's the evening of the paint along and then it takes a full day to clean up. Um, but in the end, it works out good. And I really enjoy uh, getting back teaching firsthand again, person to person, uh, as much as I enjoy doing the uh, YouTube videos. So. That's it for now. Um, as always, I thank you for um, your time and I will see you next time. I'm Tim Packer.